Everyone has heard of it. The stories about a base that cannot be raided standing somewhere deep in the frozen lands. Everyone who dared tried raiding it many times, but each time sadly ended the same way. You see, when creating this base, I've added a couple of sneaky features so that the people who raided would think they succeeded, but like always, they would never realize that they have only scratched the surface of it. Welcome back everyone, this is me Faded and today I present to you the Titan Mini, a base designed to withstand both online and offline raids. It can be built up from a simple 2x1 starter which we all love and use. Additionally, I've designed this base in several variations allowing you to customize it to your preferred playstyle. Whether you're a new player or an experienced one, this base will suit you all and I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't make this base beautiful because in my opinion the connection with what you build is the most important thing ever. Now before we go into the base tour, let's take a quick look at the main features this base has. And the first being the insane shooting floor peaks and head glitches that I love the most. They offer great cover and visibility at the same time which is a huge advantage in an online raid. Next are these peak downs which come in play when the side of the base is breached. They give you great visibility downwards and if you have some nades on hand it can become really lethal as you do not even need to peek to kill the raiders. Going forwards we have my favorite hidden feature of them all, the pixel gap. And there's tons more amazing features that this base has, so let's go and take a look at them in the base tour. Starting off we have our disconnectable external ECs. There is in total two of them and to disconnect them simply place a twig foundation and a roof on top. Moving along we have a simple alone in Tokyo style gatehouse. As we go through this base tour I quickly wanted to mention that I recently launched my channel memberships. Here you can support me and receive some sweet perks in return such as exclusive builder sanctuary codes for the bases I'm working on, access to a member only chat where we discuss base creation and current members have actually provided invaluable feedback on early versions of this base so a huge thanks to them. I'll leave the discord and memberships link in the description down below. And now continuing with the tour we have our spacious compound with some really sweet turrets angles. Going to the base we've got a nice and spacious entrance with a couple of drop boxes. Jumping up we've got our cozy second floor with boxes, furnaces and all of that good stuff. And behind this door as you can see there is a bunker which can be opened from the inside of the core like this. Next we have the pixel gap which you saw earlier. Mm -hmm. 
and a quick demonstration on how to close the bunker. Jumping into the third floor we have a bunch of storage and I wanted to mention that this base can be entirely built using a single TC without externals, although I don't recommend it but there is that feature out there. And next on this floor we have a couple of beds and the entrance to our shooting floor. And then this last door leads us to our roof, which is really spacious, has tons of angles and you can really do whatever you want with it. And that's it with the base tour, now let's go and build this beauty. A quick note that I'm going to show you how to build two variants of this base. First I'm going to show you how to build this one you just saw with the pixel gap and then I'm going to show you how to build a starter without a pixel gap which will be a little easier to build and cheaper but it's going to lack like that pixel gap so choose whichever you want. So after you spawned on the beach, farmed your resources and found the location where you want to build, I highly suggest you slap down a wooden shelter first. This provides a simple place to store your access loot and afterwards go out and search for a slightly uneven ground like this. And the reason being is that you want to hide that pixel gap as much as possible, so building it in a ditch will allow us to place our raised foundations at a normal height, which will make this base look like a simple 2x1 and cause less attention. When building the pixel gap, we need to ensure we have enough space. So first place down a triangle as low in the ground as possible, then place two squares and a triangle on the end. And if it all fits, remove one square and upgrade the other one. And then from the side of the square, build out the five triangles and place another square on the end like this. Next step is to remove this middle triangle, jump down and while looking at the raised foundation place a low square, upgrade it and you should clearly see a tiny pixel gap between these two squares. Now just simply place your foundations and half walls on the sides and upgrade everything as shown in the video. Now place this floor in the exact same spot as I did and wall in your base. Place your TC in this corner and now you can start slapping down your deployables. When placing your large boxes in the pixel gap, make sure not to place them too close to the raised foundations because if they're too close it will prevent you from upgrading the foundations as shown here. It will just say upgrade blocked. So just make sure to place the boxes a bit further away from the foundations and after you place the boxes check again if you can upgrade these foundations. And after you place the boxes in the correct spot just make sure to lock them, that's the most important thing really. When everything is set, you can place the final floor. Just make sure to look at the back wall when placing it. By the way, if you do not have metal, you can upgrade these floors to stone. It will work fine. And now if you did everything correctly, you should be able to loot these boxes through the gap right here. Now when you gather more metal, next step would be to go outside and upgrade those two raised exposed foundations because they are really easy to soft side. And actually this is the hardest part of the build done. Now let's move into a building server and I'm gonna show you how to build a bunker. Now where you have this empty triangle next to the door, place a half wall and two floors on top like this. You can upgrade the square floor to stone or metal and make sure to always leave this triangle floor twig, simply because it's going to be the support for our bunker and you'll need to break it in order to open the bunker. Now place this window here and let's go outside to build a chute.
For the jump up, if you do not have a ladder, you can use a simple furnace. And now to place the bunker, simply select the triangle spiral stairs and place them in this spot right here. You should see this blue pillar right there and yeah, just simply place it here and you'll be good to go. And if you're wondering, no, you cannot get pushed through this gap. You cannot go through this bunker unless you blow it up. And to open the bunker, simply break this twig. Now to place boxes here you'll need to use ramps simply because somehow the bunker manages to break the top right box when it opens. So to fix that just place ramps here and they're also gonna add some protection to the core as well so it's a win-win. Also when placing the top right box I leave a small gap from the window. Now I'm gonna show you how to build the base without the pixel gap, so just follow my steps, it's really simple and the rest of the base is gonna be the same as if the original one. And that's it, it's way more simple than the pixel gap version, so choose which one you like the most. In this phase I'm going to start upgrading everything to its final tier just to save some time. Note that you do not need to upgrade everything to the top tier right away and I really don't expect you to. Just work your way up while progressing through the game. Currently I'm gonna be upgrading the core to its final tier so just watch carefully which part of the base should be upgraded to what tier. Now let's start honeycombing the base. After honeycombing we can finally start building the second floor, but before we need to build a tiny entrance so it would be easier to jump into the base. Now building the second floor is really simple, it's just basically walling in the footprint, so just follow my steps. Seal off these two triangles with walls and if you have an abundance of high quality, I suggest you upgrade these walls to high quality.
To help protect the base against top-down raids, I highly suggest to upgrade these floors to high quality when possible. At this phase, if you're not careful enough, it's really easy to get deep down from the roof, so to avoid that, I highly suggest you place down some shotgun traps here. Ok, now let's quickly build the entrance so it's a bit more safe for entering the base. I uh, two triangles here, and on those triangles place these hard facing walls towards you. Now I'm gonna build the compartment for the drop boxes, so to do it easier just place a stair here, jump up, place a triangle and on this triangle place your boxes and afterwards just seal everything in. And now all that's left is just to fill in the deployables. Now we're gonna build the outer ring, so just follow my steps and watch carefully where these foundations should be placed. Now upgrade all of these foundations to metal. Because these foundations are technically not connected to each other, they will decay, so to stop that we need to place some walls. Place these walls on the square and I upgraded them to stone, but if you have more metal, I highly recommend upgrading them to metal right away. And after that, just upgrade all of these two big walls to stone. Next step is to expand the base upwards and the process is pretty similar to the second floor. Once again, don't forget your shotgun traps down below because people can easily go deep through this door. You can customize this floor however you want, there is a lot of space in this base so design it to your preferred liking. We're gonna start off this phase by extending the outer ring with half walls.
Now in this shown half walls place low walls on top. So basically where you have your square on those two half walls place two more low walls. Now before proceeding any further we must place these triangle floors in this exact spot before placing anything else. And after we've done that we can place our roofs. Now let's start placing the supports for our shooting floor. Now let's start placing the floors, watch carefully where everything should be placed. Placing windows in this spot are going to be a little different because they require a build out. So follow my steps carefully and do exactly what I did. These floors I'm placing right now has to be stone and do not upgrade them to metal. Now let's build the core of our shooting floor. You can design the core of the shooting floor however you want, I personally make it into a bedroom so that I could quickly respawn and get back to the action as fast as possible. In these side wall frames place garage doors before placing the floors above because you won't be able to do it afterwards.
To build the frames for your windmills, you'll need to place them from underneath like this. For this base you can use however many TCs you want, but in my experience two externals are plenty for this base, and to build them correctly follow my steps carefully. At this moment, if you tried placing the external TC, you'll notice that you cannot, and that's because that wig build out is still connected to the base, so let's remove a couple of foundations and replace the TC. And after that, just repeat the same steps on the other side until you have two exactly identical external TCs. Next step is to place metal barricades and to make them more effective I'm placing this twig which allows me to place the metal barricade sticking off the edge which makes it super hard laddering over. Now let's build these simple turret pods.
To build a compound correctly, start by placing your first walls at the same angle as the turret pod walls like this. Now to place the gatehouse walls correctly, position them in the middle of the side windows and then angle them so that they would be looking at the turret pod walls at the same angle. And now just connect these walls together like this. Make sure to use Alt to look around and see if you have enough space to place another wall. Now let's build a couple of turret pods like this and slap down our furnaces and that's basically it. The base is finished so thank you all so much for watching. I hope you'll have fun with this base and design it to your own liking and playstyle because like I said earlier, connection with the build is what matters the most and actually determines your wipe. So thanks again, till the next one, peace.